today we're going to do some, I think we may have done similar thing before. We're going to uh, compile from Rust to WebAssembly. So the, this page, which is from the uh, Mozilla docs, is the first step. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have the appropriate code. So cargo install wasm pack. Let's see if I, I should have cargo. Actually, um, may need to, uh, well, probably want to do is update uh, Rust, but for, for the purposes of this demo, I don't think it's going to be critical. Um, what we're going to do is this um, this is going to get what we need and then we're going to create uh, we are going to create a, uh, a little app. So, it downloaded the crate. Remember, crates are like, I guess, packages in Java. And it's now getting everything it needs to, to do what it needs to do. I'm going to look at the what you want to do with Rust when you're updating, keeping Rust up to date. I think we might want to do that. See how we're doing there. It's still going. It's getting everything it needs. And then the next thing we're going to do, I think, is um, run Rust Up Update. And you can see it's got 202 out of 287 packages that, it's, that are going. And uh, not the fastest thing. So let me let this complete and then we will continue. Okay, so now that that's done, what we're going to do is we are going to run Rust Up, which updates everything. It's an installer and updater for us. So Rust Up Update. And that's just going to make sure it gets the latest stable release. And hopefully this will be, uh, okay, so it's, it's cleaning up. And... getting everything good. And this is the way you keep Rust up to date. And like I said, this is the stable release. You can tell it to use a beta or a nightly. Uh, if you're really trying to get work done, you're probably best with the stable. Unless something is in the beta 
that is that you're going to be using for your project and you know that that's a reason you may want to use the beta or you just you're trying to help them beta test so now it's going along it's getting all the components again uh, this is interesting oh okay what's it doing going along and almost looks like it's it's doing things um, like multiple times but there we go all right um, okay so now what we want to do is we want to um, get our thing going. So uh, the next step is to create the project. So we go cargo new lib hello Watson and You can see it has the get, it has the cargo, which again is like Maven. Um, and it has LibRS. So, let's have a look at this. So this is just a test. Um, we're not going to use it. You know what I'm going to do? I don't. I'm going to move it. way because it's typing it in I mean normally what we'd be using for this is um, Eclipse for rust and okay I'm gonna see. See where it is. I'm in Eclipse Rust, okay. And I'm in Wassum. And I'm in Hello Wassum. And I'm in Source. And I'm going to call this lib.rs. Save it. So. And you can see we got it. So let's get this thing compiled. 
and built. So, let's see. Yeah, so this here at the top where it says X turn, let's go here. Um, X turn. This is what builds a bridge between um, Rust and JavaScript. So it's saying this is what you can call. And we have our own method there. And um, let's see. Again, we define it here. We uh, now have our little method that it's going to call. So this use is using the Watson Bygen crate, and then we could uh, eat, tell it to use it uh, with these annotations or attributes. Um, so now we want to compile it. Before we could, let's have a look at the, the cargo. Let's see what this is. Remember, in uh, Linux, you have to, you, it's case sensitive. So we got the name or version, the edition, and dependencies. And, okay, so we have to change it and make it match that. Um, so, we're going to do that. And all I'm going to do is copy that in. Now, dependencies here, as you can see, hopefully you can see, yeah, you can see, is the bingen, which we've been talking about. So let's see. Uh... So, we're going to save that. And let's check. And you can see it has what it needs, the crate type, the dependencies, et cetera, et cetera, the name. Um, so now we're going to build it. Now this is going to be very similar when you're using it, you know, when we end up using it uh, on the on the chain. Uh, I don't know if you need to use the connecting to JavaScript, but we we um, we do uh, use uh, JavaScript and um, React.js to talk to the um, the methods in our uh, in our contracts. But what this would let you do is this will now you can you can use this as as uh, you know with JavaScript and a web thing uh, you know if you're using the web and we're gonna get into that um, I think we're gonna stop for right now and tomorrow we're gonna actually use this thing and uh, take it from there so as you can see what we did. So we, let's go through this, uh, compile the, the Rust code to WebAssembly. So it generates a JavaScript file that wraps up the WebAssembly file into a module the browser can understand, creates a package 
directory and moves the JavaScript from WebAssembly code into it. Read your cargo form produces the equivalent package.js. Remember, if you if you've used Node.js, you're familiar with package.json. It's uh, similar again to the um, Maven Palm file. And really, so let's have let's have a look here what we got. So we got package, and you can see we got a wasm. Uh, the TS, that's for TypeScript, we got JavaScript, and we have a package. So, well, I meant to do... It is a binary file. All right. Um, so, yep, this is your TypeScript. Um, if you're familiar with React.js or um, Angular. And we have the same thing. And you can see we got some JavaScript. So we're creating the let cache text decoder dec and it decodes and um, it has a method that returns the um, the string. So this is basically going to allow you to, to call your uh, what we did through the web and that's what's going to be the next video. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, please give a like. Uh, please uh, subscribe, ring the bell, uh, share it with your friends if they're interested. Um, remember when you get into the um, substrate change chains uh, that that uh, use Wasm, as we've looked at before. When you get into Ethereum two, which is going to use eWasm, uh, you know, being familiar with Wasm, being familiar with Rust, and how to how to compile it into Wasm uh, is going to be helpful. Now, it may not be exactly this way. Because, again, we're going to be using it a little differently. We're going to be putting it on the blockchain rather than, you know, the, the Ethereum 2 chain rather than using it in the web. But um, I think this is a good exercise, and I think Rust is going to be a good language to know along with Solidity. As I said the other day, Solidity isn't going anywhere. There's just too much stuff in it already. And um, it is certainly less uh, cryptic than Rust. And uh, so it, I don't think it's going anywhere. But uh, Rust is definitely going to be one of the languages that's going to be used by blockchain developers uh, in coming years. So we want to get familiar with it, get familiar with the concepts involved, which is, you know, your cargo... Uh, as as opposed to a, um, you know, using cargo as opposed to Maven, uh, Maven uh, understanding your cargo.toml as opposed to the palm, palm, was it, palm.xml, etc. So, again, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, if it has, uh, please give a like. Uh, again, please share it with your friends, etc. And I will speak to you next time.